Hello, crafty friends. It's Debbie with Make It With Me. I wanted to just hop on here today and just go through some of these backgrounds that I've had lying around my around my desk, and I've got several. And I don't know if you all do this, but sometimes like we, my, my crafty friends and I, we will just have a background making night. So I had all these backgrounds, and I hadn't done anything with them, and I've just got scraps everywhere. I've got little embellishments everywhere and I thought yeah, I just want to get rid of some of these scraps so and I had some really pretty backgrounds so I'm just going to go sort through some of these I've got some alcohol link backgrounds some embossing some foiling some heat embossing dry embossing some stamping and so I'm just sorting through these and thought it might be fun to just pull out some scraps and little bits and pieces and see if we can't make some cards out of some of these backgrounds these foiled ones right here i don't know what i'm going to do with those but they're so pretty i was thinking actually uh that gold foiled one might make a really nice mother's day card for my mom so maybe i'll work on that one and then this plain white one those white ones those are some of the ranger embossing paste that you're supposed to be able to ink blend on you know normally the embossing resists the ink but these i think they're supposed to pick up the ink so i've kind of got some ideas and i thought i don't know how many we'll get through i don't want to make this video too awfully long but um i thought we could just put some of these together and see what we can make with them and I did, that one's a little bit of ink splatter just um some ink blending and some water so i've got several chosen here so Let's just um, get started and see what we can make with some of these. I've got a couple of bins of just things that I've colored and hadn't used. You know how you color things and you think you're going to use them on a card and you end up not using everything or, you know, and I don't know if you do that. I'm, I'm, I know many of my crafty friends do, but I'm just going to kind of pull some of these out, see what we can put together. So um, I've got this bin here. And then I've got another one. <laughs> I mean, just everywhere. And then I've got, this is another alcohol ink one. And some little otters that I thought would look cute. Um, I've saw I've seen um, some samples of things that people had done with those little otters. It was a celebration set. And I thought it'd be fun to try one of those. Just kind of change it up and see if I can kind of make it my own and do something with it. But we can work on that one. And then I had already started this one. And then that's what kind of prompted me to do this video. Because I was working on this one. This is that black Yupo paper. And I didn't really like the way the alcohol ink turned out. But then I found this overlay from the Blossoms and Bloom set. And it has a really nice overlay die with that set. And so I just cut it out on the black and started cutting it out. And... Uh, my friend Keona gave me the idea of not cutting it out fully and so kind of got already got started on that one so we'll finish that up and then I've got some more of those I cut out of white paper I just had a ton of scraps tons of scraps and so I just thought we would go through some of these pick out some things I've even got some little shaker bags already made that we might use on something and some little sharks and sloths and just different things some tigers so let's just um let's just go through some of this see what we can put together and just have some fun and chat a little bit so i hope you'll hang around and join me and we'll just get these put together oh here i'm just showing you some little butterflies i had some leftover pieces after i cut that one out it was kind of a large sheet and um got some card bases pulled out and some different colors and then some mats that we might use just things you know just that we have lying around so let's get started and see what we can come up with okay so i've got our first one here this is the one i'd already started and so it's pretty much finished i just need to flip this over and I am going to mark the um, area where I need to trim this down just so it'll fit on the front of the card. So I'm just going to trim that off and then we will get that glued down. This one will be pretty cut and dried, pretty simple. <laughs> that alcohol ink, that black Yupo paper, I don't know if you've used that, but 
I don't know, it just didn't work exactly the way I thought it was going to. It felt more like, you know, how when you do alcoholic backgrounds on UPO paper, the white, it, it just kind of, I don't know, it just flows better and it sits on top and it just blends better. But on the black, it just felt like that the alcohol ink was just soaking into the paper. So I didn't really think I was going to get much of anything on there. I just kept layering and layering and layering. And so, but anyway, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. So it was nice to figure out something to do with it. So I am just going to pull out some of the Fresh Freesia paper and the ink. And I'll grab my blending brush. And I wanted to just, just so it's not just so plain, I'm just going to do a little bit of ink blending around the edges. And um, most of you, um, I think, have done ink blending before. But I just want to go around the edges a little bit. And so I'll just, um, I'm going to get started with that. And you don't need to sit here and watch me ink blend. So I'll probably go ahead and just um, show you the finished piece on this one. So I'll finish this ink blending and come right back. Okay, so I've got my ink blending finished, so I'm just going to grab that front panel, and we will go ahead and get that glued down. Now, I don't know if we'll get around to the greetings on there or not, but I'm just going to go ahead and get this piece glued down. I'm looking at some ribbon just to see if I want to add a little bit of ribbon to that, but I kind of think if, after I figure out, it's just the way it's cut, it's not going to lay right well, I mean, it probably would lay okay, but I just don't know if it'll look very well to just, if, if it doesn't go all the way across the card. So we'll probably come up with a different alternative there, and I'm just kind of looking through some pieces and mustache. So I think we'll just leave this one the way it is, and uh, we'll come back. We'll let that dry, and um, I'll get that piece glued on, and then we'll come back and see what else we can do with it. Okay, so I've pulled this prized peony out of my little bin of embellishments here, and I'm just kind of trying to decide which papers, which backgrounds that it might look good on. I'm really liking that stone one, but I finally settle on this green and gold, just because um, it's just, at first I thought it maybe blended a little too much, but after I looked at it, I thought it looked um, looked really good with that, and I just really love that gilding flakes and the stenciling and uh, just all the colors. I just thought it matched really pretty. So I've pulled out a piece of in my out of my um, scraps a little bit of the crushed curry, which is the same color that I had cut that uh, prized peony out of, and it's really got some dimension. If you haven't seen those, they're really nice. So I'm going to go with this, and I thought it would look good on a black mat and a white card. So I'm going to mat this one actually twice. Um, well, actually, I think I end up using a black card. So I actually only mat it once, so I won't have any white around this one. So we'll just go ahead and put this one together. And I'm trying to decide if I want to turn it horizontal or vertical. And I think I end up going with the vertical because it's going to cover up a little too much of my gold. So I'm just going to trim this down. And then we'll get our layer cut. Okay, so I've got my piece cut. So I'm just going to grab my front panel with the background. Just kind of placing that on there to see if I want to go with horizontal or vertical. And I kind of, I'm just going to get this piece glued down to the crushed curry color because I know I want to do that part, that piece of it. And then, of course, I've got it laying on my black, on my black um, card base. And then I'll just kind of get that stuck down. And then I'm going to kind of look at some ribbons and kind of see if I decide if I want any ribbon on there. And I'm trying this Bumblebee Gingham ribbon. It's really close to the crushed curry but I don't know. I just kind of, I'm struggling with wanting to cover up any more of that background. I even tried a thin black and then tried going the other direction with it. And I really think it would have looked fine either way as far as, you know, the positioning with the flower. But I finally end up settling on vertical because I don't have to cover up as much of the Gilded Flakes. 
and this flower already has so much dimension I kind of also toyed with the idea of popping it up with some dimensionals but I want this to be able to go through the mail because I think this one will be mailed so I end up going directly just glue the flower directly down and this one will be pretty much done so we'll come back and um, I'll let that dry and then we'll come back and and work on the greeting for that one but I think it ended up looking really pretty without any of the added ribbon on it so that finishes up this one and we'll move on to our next one okay so now I'm gonna pull out this little um, foiled retro looking piece with the little circles on it and I'm using this uh, image from the Delivering Cheer set. It was one that came out back at Christmas. And it's uh, it's really cute. You can, um, if this one's got packages, there's the one lady carrying trees, different ones. But anyway, I'd already colored this and I thought, gosh, how perfect is that blue go with this one? So I'm just going to pull out some pens and um, some gel pens. I'm going to use some uh jelly roll pens and some Cricut gel pens and just add a little bit of bling to some of these pieces and um, it's amazing how much just a little bit of a white gel pen will add to your image but I just wanted to instead of leaving those packages plain maybe give them a little bit of color because this is obviously going to be a birthday card or you know it could even be a congratulations card anything where you were going to give a gift I guess so I'm just going to add some of that, and then um, you'll notice that there is a couple, I'm kind of new to foiling, so this was just something I was just kind of playing around with. I do not have a laminator, so the foiling I did, I've used like the deco, this is the deco foil, and I used the deco foil pen and then some duo gel. Um, so there's this new duo gel that you can get now if you don't have a laminator and you can um, you can put, add the foiling without having to have that. And actually, I mean, it took a little while for the duo gel to dry, but once it did, it worked really nice. I mean, it goes on white so you can see where it goes and then you just have to let it um, dry till it's clear, but it stays tacky and then you just add your foil to it and we'll I'll have to do a video on that. Um, I know there's tons of people out there that do them, but um, I've got some newbies in my group, so I thought it might be fun to to maybe try that. So, so I am just going to pop this one up, and I'll get my foam tape added, but I'm going to get this glued down. And then I'm just kind of looking at some ribbon here. And, of course, I've got that on that uh, smaller circle toward the right. It's got just a little piece that didn't quite the gel didn't quite stick to it maybe I didn't get it on there good or let it dry too long but using that black ribbon is going to give me an opportunity to kind of cover that piece up because I was going to move the lady you know the little cheerful package lady over a little bit but I don't know I just didn't want to cover up too much of it and plus I needed to kind of cover that white space a little bit so I'm just going to stick that down with a little bit of scotch tape that ribbon stuck down and then I'll just kind of skip through this next part because you kind of can see where I'm going and you don't need to see me glue and put foam tape on. So I'm just going to uh, skip through this part and get to the next. So hold on. Okay, so I've got my foam added. I've got uh, uh, the backing all pulled off. And I'm just going to place my little cheerful lady here. And that is that card. And I just think that turned out really cute. Okay, so this one, um, I've got another alcohol ink background here. And then I've got this overlay that we used in the first card from the Blossoms in Bloom. And I've cut a few of these out of white. And I am just going to take my sponge and glue two of these together just to give it a little bit more dimension. This is kind of my cheater's way of getting glue on an intricate piece the only drawback is it does dry really fast so you have to really try to get it on there straight pretty quickly because the layer of glue is so so thin that it um, it really it really dries fast so I'm just kind of trying to get the placement on here and I originally thought I might just leave this whole piece um, all one and just put the overlay on it just because I really liked this background 
but um, I just want to kind of get it glued on there and see. And then I discover once I get it, once I get my piece glued down on there, that um, I need to trim it down a little bit to fit on the on my card base. And so again, I'm still thinking at this point that I was going to just use the the whole panel, but I do end up going ahead and just cutting it down. And, and, you know, just kind of fussy cutting a couple of the outer edges. And that's why I sped this up because I realized I still had all that in the video. <laughs> so we'll just kind of move through that part a little bit. And I'm just fussy cutting out. These colors are so pretty, aren't they? I just thought they looked really pretty with those flowers. And I almost inlaid some green, but I just really did not want to cover up any of that. I just think that color is so pretty. And actually, I think it even would have looked good to cut out the entire thing on this one instead of leaving that edge. But I don't know. I'm just kind of liking the look of that. And I think it'll be pretty once we get our greeting put on here. So this one's going to be pretty simple as well. And we'll just get that glued on there. And that will finish up our next card. And I just think it turned out really pretty. Now I'm kind of looking at some greeting pieces here, but I just don't want to cover any of that up. I just think the image is too pretty. So I'll probably end up finding a smaller uh, sentiment strip or something to go on this one just so I don't cover up too much of it. I think that turned out nice. So now we'll move on to our next piece. And this one, I think I told you in the beginning, wasn't absolutely one of my favorite backgrounds. But it grew on me after a while. But I started looking at that blue and those gilded flakes with the yellow. And I found this bird that I had colored with uh, pencils. And um, I don't know, I was watching a Biddy Penny video. And she was coloring with pencils and it just inspired me to get mine back out. I hadn't used them in a while, so... I colored the little bird with my Prismacolors, and I'm going to get that placed down, and then I discover that I like this little gold piece, and again, I go through the, you know, the dilemma of the ribbon. I don't know why, I just like to use ribbon, <laughs> but um, I decide in the end to go this way, and I'm just going to tap, I'm going to put this down with some temporary adhesive. Uh, just because um, I'm going to have to stamp a greeting on that, and... Uh, I'll have to go back and glue it down permanently. But that's our next card. And I think it turned out really pretty. Okay, friends. So this one is going to be a lot of fun. This was the piece that I... Um, this was another alcohol ink background that I thought really looked pretty like water. And this was the um, Awesome Otters set. So my idea here is I already had these colored. And so I used this... Um, this set of dies which is the layering circles one is a little scalloped one is straight and um i wanted to do this i saw this idea actually they had one of these similar with some different paper in a catalog and i saw it and then i saw another one online um in the uh, paper pumpkin no i don't remember where i saw it but anyway i just thought it was really cute the way they cut the circles out and um i don't know if they did it the same way i didn't look but i thought i would just kind of use that as some inspiration and just kind of put my own stamp on it but i'm just inlaying those pieces for now with um a temporary adhesive just so i can kind of get the layout again i use temporary a lot so i'm thinking i might pop up the top piece and I, I've started to leave the little otters on white and not inlay those other pieces. But I don't know. After I started looking at it, I just decided I liked it better with the inlaid pieces. So then I started thinking, oh my goodness, this would make an awesome shaker card. I thought it was so cute. The circles were already there. And I could have here, I could have taken a whole piece of acetate and just covered the entire back with it. But... I'm not doing that because today's use up your scraps day. So I got into my drawer and I pulled out some scrap pieces of acetate and I am just going to lay those down and just get those glued into place. I 
and I'm not sure why this did not speed up for me like I wanted it to but I'm gonna try to see if I can change that We'll get these glued down. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. So once we get through this little piece, I'm just gluing, putting the glue down, and I'm going to lay the acetate on the back. And you can see I've just kind of cut it. It's kind of hard to see on the video because acetate's just hard to see. So I'm just going to get those pieces glued down. And then once I get that glued down, I'll just lay some weight on that. It looks like I've got one little piece that was just kind of sticking through that other little window. So I'm just going to glue this acetate down, and then I'll come back and I'll get this sped up just a little bit more. Because this one turned out quite long. We made a lot of, a lot of cute little adjustments on this card. Okay, so I'm going to um, go ahead and start getting my foam tape added to the back. I cut out a lot of that. I don't think you need to want to sit here and watch me put on a bunch of foam tape. So I'll probably just get through some of that. So here I've got all my foam tape on. I've got all my backing off. And I there are two ways you can put this together. You can... Put your little bits in the acetate pieces and then try to overlay that on top, but I do not do well with that. So the way I do it is I lay my little bits on top of my image first and then try to set it on top because I feel like I can get it much straighter that way. And you'll laugh when you see this, but I'm using a little baby spoon to just dip out some of those little bits and just lay them on the circles. And they'll move to the bottom, you know, once we get it on and, and get it in there. And then I'm going to save a few of those little bits. I had to take a few off of that smaller one because it's just a smaller circle. And I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. Even though I know this is good and sticky, I'm adding the liquid glue because that way when I do go to stick it, um, if I don't get it placed exactly right the first time, I can, um, I can move it. It's a little more forgiving. That way I can slide it a little bit if I need to, which I normally do. So I'm just going to get that placed on there and press that down. And there is our little shaker card. And I'm shaking it a lot, I know. If it makes you dizzy, just look away. But I'm just going to lay this in the little stamp case on there. This is the set I'm using. It was a celebration freebie in the last celebration. And so my plan is to put that, it's a birthday on the front, and then do You Are Otterly Awesome on the inside. And I noticed that I had them raised. I probably should have spread those elements out a little bit because it looks like some of them stuck on the belly of the first little otter, which actually <laughs> I thought kind of looked a little bit cute. But um, I'll figure out a way to get it. You can just bend the card a little bit, not too much, you know, just enough to loosen it, and I'll figure that out in a little bit. So, so now we're just going to add some of these little elements to the outside, some of those little smaller ones that I picked up in the beginning. They almost look like little to me, they look like little water drops. They're just kind of little uh, iridescent uh, enamel dots. But I really liked the sequin mix. It was so cute. It even had little pink shells in it. And the more I look at this card, I think I'm going to give this one to my granddaughter. She's got a birthday coming up. And uh, she loves little sea creatures or any kind of creatures. And I think that she would really like this card. She'll probably set it up in her room. But I'm going to go ahead and just get the elements added here. And you'll notice I'm having a little bit of trouble with my uh, take your pick tool. It looks like I'm going to have to replace the gum piece in that. I've been using that. I think I've been using this tool for at least a couple of years. And so I think I just need to replace it. I'm going to get my head in the way just here a little bit, but it's not too bad. 
So I do decide to go ahead and add just a few of those smaller ones. I don't end up using the larger ones. I just thought they were a little too large. So I just kind of stuck with the smaller ones. And here's where I'm kind of figuring out how to loosen that, those uh, elements on the one on the left. All right, guys, longer. this video has gotten quite long, so I think I'm going to stop here. So there so you I'll go. Just do a little recap of what we've done so far. We've got this one. We've done this one with the alcohol background. We've got our cute little retro-looking card here with the lady carrying the presents. And then this one we haven't glued together yet because I've got a stamp of greeting on that one. And then we've got this one with our pretty alcohol ink background, which I think is so pretty, with our white overlay on it. And then we've got our shaker card, our cute little otters. And I realized after I turned off the video that I forgot to add my little frames. And then, of course, we'll put the greeting on this one right here. And this is our 5 by 7 So we got six cards done with um and used up some of my backgrounds that I've been needing to do I used up some scraps and so I think what I'll do is stop right there and then um we'll do a part two to this video I've got tons more backgrounds tons more little bits and elements sitting on my desk in these trays and a ton more scraps in my little bin here so this might end up being um three or four parts so let me know if you'd like to get your scraps out and do some of this with me and um, I really would like to know if anybody's interested in doing doing this live and um, I think we'll stop right there I thank you so much for stopping by I hope you'll subscribe hit that like button and please leave me a comment so I'll know what kind of content you all would like to see so I am just gonna put the greetings on these and then I'll share that with you in the next video what I ended up uh, doing with those and finishing them up. So thanks again. Have a nice Sunday and I'll see you next time. Bye.